Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha and bienvenido to Hispanic Hawaii. I'm Richard Concepcion with Ana Jimenez McMillan. The Hispanic Heritage Month is celebrated between September 15 to October 15 in recognition of American Latino contribution to the nation. Today's program is to celebrate and recognize Latino artists here in Hawaii. Buenos tardes. So today's guest is Dervin Leva, who's a Cuban artist and shares his art with Cuba life of political, social, and cultural life. Benvenido. Welcome <laughs> to Hispanic Hawaii. Thank you for having me in the show. So tell us about yourself and how long you've been in Hawaii. I've been in Hawaii for 14 years. I came here because the military. I used to be a Navy diver and I retired here. So I've been here in the island for 14 years now. Kind of grew up under me and now has become my second home. Grows on you, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So what inspired you to become an artist and uh, what type of art do you create? Well. I started painting and drawing when I was very little. Uh, I always enjoy all the Disney cartoons, so I always rush to my friend's house to watch the cartoons. And then after we finished watching the movie or the cartoon, I always, we went and got some paper and pencil, and then we started trying to draw all the characters. And it was kind of hard at the time because you couldn't pause, you couldn't uh, kind of have a reference to do it. So you have to pay attention to everything that they were doing so you can recreate it and then uh, that's how I started drawing. Then through my life I kept painting and doing some drawings but then after I retired from the military I went to UH Manoa and I was taking my, I was doing a BA in uh, painting. Uh, from there I changed, oh well, I finished my BFA with a concentration in a sculpture and that's how I started uh, doing more of the artwork that I do now. Um, the type of painting that I do, it's kind of hard for me to describe because I kind of do take a little bit from everybody. A lot of people ask me if it's uh, cubism or they ask me if it's abstraction or has a lot of elements from realistic. So I kind of use a little bit of everything. Uh, it, it's hard for me to explain. You just kind of have to see the art because I take elements from everybody. Uh, and that's, I think, what makes my art special. I like it because I just take reference from all the different artists that I've been studying through history, even from the Renaissance, a lot of the great masters. Uh, so I take a little bit of everybody and then just trying to include it into my work and then create my own. Oh, that's a lot of work. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to ask you, get t talk to me about the techniques that, that you use, or how, how everything is started. Well, normally, uh, I spend a lot of time just uh, researching the idea of what I want to uh, paint. Uh, I spend a lot of time looking at uh, photos or uh, a lot of photos from Cuba, different places, whatever I, uh, I'm getting my idea from. Then I think what is the idea behind the painting, what is what I want to tell the people with the painting. Uh, I look at a lot of musical instruments, and then once I got the idea in my head, uh, I go and I start doing the drawings. I do the drawing directly into the canvas. Normally, I don't do a sketch, which is uh, what most people normally do. They, part of the process, they do their sketch and then they bring that sketch into the canvas. So you go straight to the canvas? Yes, I don't like okay. uh, doing the sketch. I just like to go and work on the canvas. And uh, what I do, I use charcoal and then I start, um, I, I put a, a thin layer of uh, red iron oxide just because I don't like the white canvas. And then uh, once I use the charcoal to do the drawings, I start having kind of like a conversation with the canvas. I start changing things around, erasing. Uh, and then once I got the charcoal, uh, you know, with the charcoal do the whole drawing, I start uh, redoing the drawing with paint. I use a, like a blue paint just to cover everything. And then at that second phase, I will call it, uh, I changed some things around, and that gave me an idea of what the final paint is going to look like. So what happens if you make a mistake? Uh, there is no mistake. Oh, I just okay. keep adding, so it's no mistake. You just continue is, creating. I just kind of keep adding more lines and uh, kind of working what, uh, with a canvas. Uh, I see what it looks like, and then if I don't like 
then I just move around or change it uh, to get a different result, maybe get a better composition or something more interesting. But there is no mistake in painting. Oh, okay, I want to know. I didn't know it. Because <laughs> no. I've seen a lot of people doing this sketch and then yeah. they're trying to create the paint. But you don't, you don't do that. You usually go straight to the canvas. Yes, I do that's go amazing. straight to the canvas. Uh, well, I mean, to me, I think that's that's easier uh, than actually doing the sketching. Uh, maybe I don't lose so much time doing the sketch, and then I just go straight to the canvas. Uh, then in the final process, when I start adding painting, um, then the conversation I start again, because then I start adding uh, value and colors and uh, creating those uh, shadows. And then that gave me a different perspective. So. Uh, then I change some things around again, and then by the time I finish, the painting is a different one from what I originally thought about. Wow, that, that's, so, a lot, that's a lot of conversation between you and the canvas. Yes, it is. So how many hours? Uh, can, can you give me like a time frame, or how long does it take for you to, well, from the beginning to the yes. end? Yes, um, I can tell you, the paintings that I do have a lot of detail, and they're very complicated. So normally, uh, the last, few paintings that I've been working on, the size are about uh, 48 by 60, mm -hmm. uh, which are pretty good size paintings. Uh, those are not the biggest one that I've done, but those take me about 80 to 100 hours, depends. And time frame, that depends on the artist, because some people to do 80 hours paint may take them three, four months. Uh, normally something like that, if I have a timeline, I can do it like between seven to 10 days. Um, I like to paint, and I paint pretty fast. Wow. But I Amazing. do uh, I spend sometimes 10, 12 hours, 14 hours uh, in one day just painting. Just painting. That, that's yes. how long it would take me to create a happy face. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. Oh, I, can't, I can't believe it. That's great. That's a lot of work. Yeah. Some of the bigger paintings uh, that I've done, I've taken about 100, uh, which is the uh, the celebration, that one is 9 by 14, and that one took me 155 hours, give it or take, wow. uh, to do. So, a lot of work. So, a lot of your artwork, I see a guitar, or that's the focal point. What's that about? Well, uh, there is several reasons, because I like the, the musical instruments, I like the string instrument, I like the music that you can produce with this type of instrument. And the guitar is, a, is something that is very common in Cuba. It's part of the Cuban culture, the music. And also, growing up in Cuba, a lot of the times when we were getting together, uh, we always used music as a way to forget about things. Uh, I mean, due to the problems that we had back then, uh, music was kind of like a way to escape. Even for a minute, you forget about the hunger or the problems that you had at home or the things that you didn't have. So music was a way to find happiness. And I kind of kept that through my life. I always listen to music when I'm painting. And I always use that as a way to inspire myself. And that's the reason why I always bring music to my paintings. Wow, and music is the language of the world. Yes, it is. So I know you said you use different um, techniques such forth, but abstraction is part of your uh, genre. And to quote a famous quote, uh, allows man to see with his mind what he cannot physically see with his eyes, which is from Arshail Gorky, which was a powerful uh, painter of the Western time. What are some artists that have influenced you? That, that's, uh, I've been influenced by a lot of artists. I, and then I think uh, with the time I've been changing, uh, I, I think that probably is a normal thing. Uh, before I used to study a lot of the uh, old masters, Renaissance, uh, Michelangelo, Da Vinci, um, Caravaggio. But then um, I love Salvador Dali. I used to read a lot of, a lot of his books, Edgar. But lately I've been um, reading more about uh, Picasso, Braque, uh, with Fred Land, which is a Cuban artist, and he used to do a lot of uh, Cubism. Also, uh, some of the other, I look a lot of the contemporary uh, work. So I've been having an influence of everybody. I, I, it's kind of hard for me to single just one person that I can say I do my work based on that person. I just uh, 
get idea from everybody. That, that makes sense because when we look at your art, we see the modernism, we see the surrealism, and we also see the, um, correct me, of the other you know, genres. So yeah, you, you have a nice blend and those vivid colors that we see. Well, I, I want to know because uh, I've been looking at your painting and kind of seeing so many different pieces in different locations, like it, something is broken, it's like shadow. That's a different style and why? Well, that's a good question, and the reason I started doing that is because uh, a lot of these paintings that I, were, I was doing was about Cuba. And um, to me, when I was representing Cuba and the landscape of Cuba, all these are memories that I have from 20 years ago. So memories are never what you think they are. Uh, there is a difference between memories and reality. A lot of the times, uh, you have an idea of what it looked like or what it was, but in reality it's completely different. And so it's like broken memory of my past. And I think that's what I try to represent on my paintings when I break a lot of the streets and the... Uh, also, in Cuba, the system is broken into pieces. Uh, the country is broken into pieces. So I think that by doing it this way, I truly represent uh, what the island is right now. Wow, unbelievable. <laughs> it, it took me a long time to figure out some of these pieces and, and trying to find that beautiful guitar that you always place in different locations. But I want to talk to you about the International Exquisite Magazine. You went into a competition and, and you become uh, number one. Talk to me about that. <laughs> yes, uh, that was a, a our exhibition that I entered. Uh, and I mean, I entered to a lot of competitions. A lot of the times, I don't know what the outcome is. And then I was surprised when I got the, the email that I was the winner for the third international art exhibition, Abstract. Um, and I, 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 was, I was surprised. I was not expecting that. Then uh, they told me I was, they're going to fish me into a magazine, which they just recently came out, was uh, last month that they feature in the, their international squid art magazine. And they uh, published some of my work that I've been doing in the last year. So it was a great experience working with them and then just have my work uh, exhibited and, all over the world. All yes. over the world in a magazine. So what about some of the exhibitions that you've done here in Hawaii? I know you did one in Hawaii, one at UH. Talk to me about that. Well, I've done several exhibitions here in Hawaii. and. Uh, the last one that I did here was uh, when I have my uh, BFA graduation. They did part of the BFA show. You do a, a exhibition at UH Manoa at the gallery. But then the most recent one that I had was an international exhibition that I did in Venice, Italy. Uh, the name of the, the festival is called Surface. And then they do like uh, three different exhibitions. The last one, which is for, for two months, is called Space. And that's where I have a lot of my work right now. Actually, all my work is uh, now all my work, but like four of my pieces are in Venice right now, and they're going to be there until the end of November. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, that was a really good exhibition because a lot of new opportunities came out from there. Uh, I've been getting a lot of emails from different magazines, books, and things like that that uh, want to also uh, feature my work. So that's I'm perfect. very excited. That, that's, that's great. Let's take a quick break. Okay. And then we're going to come back. We're going to continue talking story. I want to know more about that paint that you took down to Venice and shown to everybody over there. Definitely. Okay? We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Hello, my name is Stephanie Mock and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pumai Weigert. 
and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. Uh, welcome back to Hispanic Hawaii. We are here talking story with Darwin Labor. He is a Latino artist here in Hawaii. Uh, so welcome back. Thanks. <laughs> All right, let's continue talking about that trip that you took to Italy and your exhibition over there. Well, uh, that was an amazing opportunity. I mean, being able to show my work over there, especially one of the paintings that I brought, because that painting is 9 by 14, so it's a very large piece. And it's kind of hard to show in a lot of the galleries because they don't have the space to show something like that. So over there, uh, not only was a good opportunity to display, but then people enjoy the work and people were able to see it. Um, Let's see, we, we have a picture, uh, the one that he was in Venice, uh, they call it the celebration. Can you show that when he's, there we go, giving ideas right here, how large is this picture right here, this drawing? So how, how many hours did you put in, in in creating this? That painting was about 155 hours that I spent. Um, and then I had a, you know, at the end, I just want to finish. So a lot of the days I was painting for 18, 20 hours. I was just want to finish the painting. So do you have a studio where you create it or you just do it at home? Uh, no, actually that one, I use one of the space at the university. Uh -huh. um, right now I use a uh, part of my house uh, for a studio, and I probably can make something that large, but that one specifically, I use one of the space at the university. Uh, so I have, uh, you know, I have the space to be able to do something so, like So that. how was the logistic, you know, take of this wonderful art that you created from here to Italy? <laughs> You well, don't want that, nobody touch you know, it, please don't touch my arms. Yeah, you know, that, actually that was a good learning experience, doing all the logistics and shipping that big painting. Uh, I just roll, once I finished the painting, I kind of roll it and then I had, it, I had it in my studio, I had him open it or anything like that. So before I send it, I kind of open it, make sure that everything looks good. And then I have to ship the, the whole painting over there as a big roll. So that was... I mean, it was not that difficult, it's just, uh, it, when you think about it, it looks like something very difficult, but today it's, it's not that bad. And, um, but going back to that painting. Yeah, when, can you bring that painting back again, please? There we go. Uh, when I uh, started doing that painting, it was kind of like a challenge for me, because I never done a painting that big. And I want to, I want to challenge myself. So I start doing the drawing of that painting, the celebration. And um, to me, you know, one of the things that I like about uh, my painting is when people look at it, everybody gets a different, op everybody has a different opinion, that's everybody true. has different ideas, and everybody has their own interpretation. And that's what I intend. When I see it, I want it to be international. I want everybody to have their own ideas about the painting. Uh, I can tell you my ideas, what is behind what, the painting. What is behind the painting. Yes. So uh, how do you come out with the title? You, you call it the celebration. Yes. Uh, the reason I call it a celebration is because uh, this painting, uh, at the time, uh, Fidel Castro died. And uh, there was a lot of, you know, there was one thing that people showed in the media, on TV, uh, people marching and suffering because Fidel Castro died. But that's only a small portion of the people in Cuba. The rest of the country, uh, a lot of them want to celebrate, but it, it, it was prohibited. They were not selling alcohol, so it was prohibited to the people to buy alcohol at the time. And if you play any loud music, they could come and arrest you. Oh, wow. But that was not shown in the media. That was not shown anywhere in the world. So people who doesn't live there, doesn't know this. Then for me, the celebration is kind of like a way to show the world what the other people want to do. What you they know? really wanted to yes, do. Yes, and that was kind of like uh, my way to speak for the rest of the country because they couldn't speak on their, you know, they couldn't say what they really wanted to say. And then uh, I came out with the, the, the celebration, which is uh, the, the musicians in front of the cathedral in Havana, and they're celebrating at night, uh, having a good time. But they're not celebrating the death of Fidel Castro. They're just celebrating 
a new era for Cuba. They're celebrating oh, that's a, great uh, point. A, a, a new uh, beginning for the island. That's what they're celebrating. So it's not about his day, it's about a new beginning uh, for Cuba. And then um, I incorporated a lot of the uh, elements in the painting, which is kind of hard to see on the, on the actual photo. But when you look at it um, in one of the towers, uh, the time that I chose, uh, 11, 20. Uh, Can you put that picture again, please? Um, okay. So uh, in the tower, the, the clock, uh, the, the time is 11, uh, 25. And that's actually November 25th. That's when uh, Castro died. Oh, wow. So I used the time as a way to represent it, uh, as a representation for the day that, uh, again, it, it became like a beginning for the Cuban uh, for, and for the country. And also, the year, you know, I, I use um, uh, Greek numbers, uh, uh, sorry, Roman numbers. Roman numbers. Okay. Um, the same, you know, I put a year, uh, which was the year that he died. And um, a, a good coincidence, I was painting, you know, I was trying to finish this painting, I was working on it. And then uh, uh, I finished the painting on January 1st, uh, last year, 2017, that's when I finished the painting. Uh, and then I realized that uh, I just finished the painting on January 1st, but that was the same year, day, you know, on January 1st, 1959, when Fidel Castro took over what a uh, Cuba. Wow. So I, wow. it, it was, I was surprised that I actually uh, finished the same day that, you know, uh, that everything began. Uh, wow, so. that's unbelievable. Wow. Well, let, let's show more pictures or more painting that you have, okay, and we nice. can talk about it. Yeah, sure. Let's talk about that one right here. Oh, so the uh, the violinist. Uh, this one, uh, I like the painting. Uh, I was trying to do something. Um, the the cathedral on the back that I use is from Trinidad, one of the cities in Cuba. Uh, that's what I use as a reference. And because I was doing a lot of the paintings before, I was always doing the night time. I want to uh, do something different. I was like, well, I want to show like what Cuba looks during the day. During but, the day, not yes, night. Okay. Uh, so I <laughs> used good. I used that painting. Uh, so it was something uh, different for me. It was kind of like a different challenge. And but at the same time, I want to use uh, a lot of the lighting and contrast um, in it. And it has some reference uh, in the painting um, about Cuba. Like on the on the on the wall, that has like a little plate where it shows uh, the island of Cuba. But then on the table, it has a book, uh, and I wrote the word libertad in it. Um, so it, it shows, you know, what, uh, what the painting is about. I mean, and, and again, the music just bring everything together about our culture and then uh, what people want. Uh, wow, that's amazing. Can we show another one, please? And, and what is that right there? <laughs> That one there. Uh, I, I kind of see a person on the left side playing playing the cello. Okay, yes. and then on the right is a woman. Uh, it's hard. It's, uh, she's standing in front of all the buildings. Okay, um, and this one is called musical loss. And uh, when I was doing this painting, uh, the reference to it was uh, uh, a lot of the people that uh, you know. Uh, in Cuba today, the society, the the, the women's uh, sex, you know, sex is kind of like a way to get out of the island, and because they find a tourist or they find somebody who can actually take them away, um, and kind of, I mean, unfortunately, not everybody, but a lot of the the young generation have found this is the only way to be able to. Escape from escape the island, from the island. Wow. and that's and they that's the way that they choose. Wow, yeah. that's hard. Let's see the next one, please. This one, uh, uh, kind of like similar idea, is called uh, Café Metela, and uh, I, I was uh, inspired. The, there is a cathedral in Santa Clara, Cuba. That's where I am from, and uh, that's what I use as a reference in the background. So okay. the left side of the painting, I kind of, that's, uh, that's a real uh, cathedral and everything. And then I use the, the women sitting 
on the table with their crucifix. Um, uh, kind of like the same idea, because a lot of the tourists uh, go to Cuba today as a sexual paradise. They just go uh, looking for sex. And that's, that's the idea behind the painting. Um, but again, when, you know, when people look at it, they have all different interpretations, which is great, because you know, I want everybody to have their own interpretation of my work. Uh, but it's important to me, kind of like to represent all these things, um, uh, because I think it's just kind of like a photographer. I'm not putting my ideas, I'm not trying to influence anybody, I'm just trying to de depict what I see. What you see and what's exactly. the reality. And, and what what is people the reality. Don't know exactly, and that's what the reality is. Um, so it's not something that I'm trying to make. It's just what is happening. They see right what now. is happening in Cuba, and in people Cuba. don't even know that. Exactly. Wow, that's unbelievable. We have one more, right? Oh, this is. I, I really love this one. Um, I mean, the the obviously the writing on the walls is uh, it tells a lot. Uh, in Cuba, you know, whatever you go, you see in a lot of the walls and everything. A lot of writings uh, that the government use uh, for propaganda. That's true. Uh, I was in Cuba. You see it so. everywhere, everywhere. And then the word uh, CDR, which is a committee to defend the revolution, that's something that they have in every uh, neighborhood. Pretty much every block uh, is just a, you know belongs to that uh, committee to defend the revolution. They have like one person who is in charge of uh, the. The you know, organizing. The orga well, he's the person who kind of like reports to the police everything that is happening, everything that is going on uh, in that neighborhood. Well, and I'm glad you uh, say that because I was in Cuba and I, and I saw that all over the place. I didn't know what it meant. That's exactly what it means. I mean. thought it was graffiti. Well, no, they actually, and the government use it as a way of uh, propaganda. They always uh, have that, um, and you see it everywhere in the island. I mean, it's just everywhere. So it's kind of a way to control people in the island. And then I put Viva La Musica because yeah, know, we, we, again, we all love the, music, right? We love yeah. music, and music is for us a way to escape that. You know, it's like that was the way that we have to forget about all the problems that we were having, and then just have fun. You know, enjoy life and uh, forget about all the problems. Well, well, we're almost out of time, and I want to ask you uh, before we, we finish with the interview: uh, What is your next exhibition, and how can a person buy some of you? Painting. Oh, um, well, my next exhibition, the one that I'm getting ready now, is for Art Expo New York. That's going to be in April. Uh, and a lot of my work that I'm doing right now, uh, I, I'm kind of getting more into competitions and art shows and things like that. So I'm not selling it at the moment. I do have some other paintings that I used to do before, a lot of uh, Hawaiian paintings and things like that, where I sell through my website, uh, DerwinLeva.com. And then uh, I do have an account, uh, Derwin uh, underscore uh, Leva for Instagram. And that's where I put a lot of my work that I'm doing right now. Uh, so if people want to follow me and see a lot of the things that I've been working on or that I'm working recently, uh, they can go through my account and uh, follow me. That's All good right. that he's using Instagram because Perfect. that's the way. Yes, it is. I mean, okay. I'm surprised how many people and how many new contacts and expose you get through those uh, Instagram accounts. All right, we want to say uh, thank you so much for coming to the show and help us to understand a lot of things through your art with Cuba. Well, we want to say thank you for watching Hispanic Hawaii, and don't forget you can rewatch this program at thinktechhawaii.com and many other programs. Thank you, and aloha.